Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. President. Division 7, Gary Van Dam. Here. Division 6, Audrey Miller. Here. Division 5, Robert Harris. Here. Division 4, George Lane. Here. Division 1, Shelly Sourceable. Shelly. Division 3, Frank Donato. Here. Division 2, Keith Dias. Here. And will you be announced? Officers, please. Here. <laughs> Thanks, Shelly. Wayne Chisholm. Can't hear me? We, we got you, Shelly. Here. Um, Tilden Kim. Here. And Holly Hughes present. Thank you very much. Item three, voluntary public roll call. If any member of the public wishes to introduce themselves, please feel free to do so now. Vincent Dino, Palmdale Water District. Thank you. John Joyce, Acton Aguadulce News. Thank you, John. And now we'll move along to item four, public comments and carry it open to the public. If anyone wishes to address the board on any item that is not on the agenda, please feel free to do so now. Hearing none, we'll move along to item five. Do I have a motion to adopt tonight's agenda? Mr. President, Ms. Rob, I move we adopt the agenda. Thank you. This is Shelley, I'll second. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Shelley Sourceable? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Keith yes. Dias? Yes, the measure passes. Thank you. Item six. Consent calendar. Do I have a motion to approve tonight's consent calendar? Uh, this is uh, Director Donato. I move we approve the consent calendar. Thank you. This is Director Miller. I'll second. Thank you. We'll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Shelley Sourceable? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes, the measure passes. Thank you. Item 7A, Finance Committee. Director Donato, do you have a report? Yes. Um, Finance Committee met yesterday, went through several items and details, and uh, we have one in front of us here regarding the um, 7A1 that... Um, has to do with the consideration possible action on proposal for replacement of six 20 inch filter influent valves at Quartz Hill Water Treatment Plant um, for a total cost of about 99,866.92. And um, John Bozegan, operation manager, is going to give us a presentation. Thank you, Director Donato. Good evening, board. So tonight we're going to present another capital uh, asset replacement project, part of the approved 2021-2022 uh, budget. Uh, this is project number ER2203, and like uh, Director Donato said, it's replacing the six 20-inch diameter uh, filter effluent valves. They're in a submerged area of the plant, and we're going to drain the plant in January and have a contractor come in and replace these valves. We have 24 of them total. Uh, we've done, the last couple years, we've done some replacements. Uh, we'll be about 75% complete after this replacement. Uh, R&V Automation has these valves in stock. They've done the work for us the last few years. And uh, we did check with some other uh, valve supply houses. The lead time for these valves is minimum 16 weeks. And uh, we're very thankful that R&V has these in stock and they're able to do the work. So we have an approved budget of $175,000 for this project. We were gonna expand the scope a little bit 
Uh, but it looks like uh, due to time constraints, we won't be able to do that this year. So the proposal from R&B to do this work came in at 99,866.92, which is uh, about $75,000 under our budgeted amount. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for John? If not, could I have a motion on board order 7A1? Uh, this director not all move on 7A1 to accept the 99,866.92. Mr. President, this is Rob, I'll second that motion. Thank you. We'll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Pierce? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Shelley Sourceable? Frank Donato? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. The measure passes. Yes. Thank, thank you, Shelley. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. The next item is a public hearing regarding the 2022 water delivery rates and charges. At this time, I will formally open the public hearing and I will ask our uh, ask for a presentation by our staff and consultants. Yes, uh, this is uh, General Manager uh, Dwayne Chisholm. Um, we have a presentation for you tonight. Um, we're going to start off uh, with uh, uh, the presentation by uh, Sadir from uh, Raftelis. And, and Sadir, if you could pronounce your last name, I'd appreciate it. This is Sadir Pardiwala with Raftalis. There you go. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And uh, he'll, he'll uh, provide uh, the uh, majority of the presentation. Uh, both uh, Matt Knudsen and I will provide some uh, additional in, uh, additional input as we go through the presentation. Um, so with that, uh, Sadir, if you'd like to uh, start off, uh, that would be great. Thank you, Dwayne. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So the agenda for today's meeting is to review the financial plan assumptions which are used to make projections for future years for revenues and expenses to identify any revenue shortfalls. We will review the proposed financial plan options, which shows the different revenue adjustments that the board can make, and then the rate options associated with those revenue adjustments. Uh, staff will discuss the customer meeting that they had and the summary resulting from that meeting. And then uh, Mr. Duane will discuss any additional information that was requested by some of the board members. Please feel free to ask questions as we go along. Uh, we don't have to wait until the completion of the presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Reftalis has been updating the district's, uh, the agency's rates every year for several years now, and we update it, uh, provide you a five-year financial plan every year the study period for the current study is go from FI fiscal year to FI 2022 to FI 2026. The key outputs resulting from the study are cash flow projections, which basically show you the revenues and expenses over the five year period, along with the overall revenue adjustments. It also shows you the reserve balances, and we try to basically balance your revenue adjustments in such a way that you have adequate reserve balances consistent with your board policy. The net result is the annual revenue adjustments, which lead to the proposed rates <coughs> for the next year. <clears throat> so to make these five-year projections, we need to have certain assumptions. We work with the current budget and the current revenues that you have uh, along with the current uh, water sales numbers and so forth, to come up with the pro projections going in five years. But we need to make certain assumptions with respect to uh, the changes in these 
uh, in these financial numbers and customer accounts and usage and so forth for each of the five years. So here's the, the here are the assumptions. Basically, we are assuming that the water usage remains constant compared to last year. So we have made no changes to the amount of water that will be consumed by the by the customers, agencies' customers. We have assumed that the annual property tax increase will be two percent, which is what is basically required by the assessor, uh, and that there will be no increase in miscellaneous non-rate revenues. On the expenses, we have assumed the general cost increase of 3%, uh, and we recognize that the, currently the inflation rate is higher, but we are looking at a long-term scenario, so we basically assume a 3% increase in, in expenses. Personal costs are expected to increase at 4%, uh, and water purchase, delivery, and treatment costs, which includes chemicals, will are expected to increase at 5% per year. Capital project costs are assumed by we are given the current year capital project costs and therefore to make projections for future years, we assume a 3% increase in those costs. Are there any questions? I do. Um, I just got the consumer, LA County sent me the consumer index report um, for Los Angeles County. And they just came out because with your figures here are very low compared to what they're proposing. Uh, as of right now, for the past year it was 6% inflation rate with utilities going up, uh, jumping to 34.8%. And they're projecting next year it could be somewhere between 6 and 8% uh, cost of living. Um, have you taken these new figures into consideration? We have the inflation numbers that you see on the screen are the ones that we have used in making projections. So we have not updated those for the latest numbers that uh, um, that you are showing right now. Okay, because this just came out Friday from the news release from the Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics, U.S. Department of the County of Los Angeles, and um, we might want to take a look at that. Um, you know, uh, of course, we all know. I don't think we all hear all we hear all day long is on the news, but um, I think when you get in your presentation, John Bozian can speak up to something that just happened to us yesterday about some cost of um, materials, what, it, what he projected and what the cost went up was uh, over 6%. So um, I think that's something we need to um, keep in mind when uh, you finish your giving your presentation. Yes, certainly. Uh, just to uh, uh, um, Director Donato, we do have uh, that graph, which we'll show later in the presentation. Okay. Thank you. I won't. Yeah, most, back. Most, most of that increase can be you know, credited to the unprecedented government you know, spending, and, and that was predicted you know, some time ago when the government started spending tens of billions of, of, of dollars. And just to comment on the uh, the water use would remain the same. You know, we don't know. We do know, or most people are probably aware. The higher the water in increase, the less water is going to be used. Uh, to what extent? We don't know. In the two percent now, the county tax increase—that's the—that's the minimum, um, but it's not the maximum. You know, with with transfers, it, it can be much more than that. Not much more, but it can be more than that, and, and it usually always is. Transfers and reassessments, which there's a lot of them, in. Um, in new homes, you know, being built. That's it. As we said, the water sales, we are assuming that they will remain the same as last year and throughout the five-year period. We are not assuming any additional increases in sales. Uh, <clears throat> the revenue and expense projections they are all based on the FY22 budget, the fiscal year budget that has been approved by the board, uh, with the following exceptions. We have assumed that in FY22, we have budgeted dollars two million in dry water purchases for for the current year. Repeat that again. In 
In the current year, FY22, we have budgeted $2 million in dry water purchases, which given the current water situation, the agency has budgeted an additional $2 million. Could you, could you explain purchase. that in particular? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, uh, uh, this way, uh, Chisholm, um, and what that's for is uh, when we have an opportunity to uh, purchase some, some additional some additional water um, to augment uh, the amount of water that we'll receive from the state uh, water project. We concluded that, uh, and the board thought it was prudent to uh, at least budget for $2 million to be included in next year's budget, given the fact that we were coming off a 5% year with very low reservoir levels. Um, and so that was concluded in the budget. It doesn't mean that we have to spend it, but it's uh, there in the budget we need to be accounted for. In, in uh, I'm sure the board probably approved that. I don't remember that. But uh, again, after um, what's happening in Northern California, that may not be necessary. <coughs> and with the 20,000 acre feet you're supposed to receive, that, that could probably be, that could probably be gone. It should be. Uh, in addition, we have included costs for the planning and engineering of the Delta conveyance tunnel. And the numbers are essentially two and a quarter million dollars in the current year, next year, three and three quarter million dollars, and in FY24, four million dollars. These are also included in the projections that we have shown for expenses. Next, next slide, please. Can you increase the size of that? I, yeah, I'm not sure we can increase the size of the... Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe not. Okay. The, it is on a full slide right now, yeah. There we go. Okay. A little better. So this chart basically shows us the operating expenses for the next five years, looking at the current budget in FY22 and using the assumptions that we had for expense projections, we have projected the expenses going forward. Um, <clears throat> the non-operating expenses include the state water project contract, uh, which is expected to, you know, going from $27.99 million, we are assuming 5% increase in those costs on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. And then below that is the debt, uh, some recovery from the debt costs. And then we have the Delta conveyance costs, uh, which are included on, uh, on the next row, two and a quarter million, three and three quarter million and $4 million. Uh, so the total expense in FY22 was about $55 million and then increases by about a million point three million dollars in, in 23 and so forth. The total change you can see on the last line going from year to year and the big increase that you see in FY22, essentially from FY21, was a $2 million additional uh, water budget, uh, dry year water purchases, as well as a Delta conveyance cost of two and a quarter million dollars, which results in a, big, in a significant change from going from FY21 to FY22. Okay, next slide, please. On the, on the dry water, you're speaking of two, uh, next year, 22? Yeah, 23. See that on um, for support line, is it from the top? Yeah, the numbers, yeah, two million dollars for one year. Okay, uh, this basically shows us. Can, the you, can, can you go back for a second? Uh, I'm just there's, there's something missing in here. What about the $11 million purchase of the Healy Ranch? Um, that uh, was not part of the original budgeting, and uh, that uh, $11 million uh, should the uh, um, board uh, agree to purchase that property would come from the reserve balances. Okay. As mentioned the project. Okay. Okay. 
this slide basically shows us the principal and interest payments on the three debt issues that we have. Uh, resulting in about $8.8 .8 million uh, in 22 and 23, and then increasing slightly from year to year uh, or dropping a little bit. It's approximately $8.8 .8 to $8.9 million per year. Okay, next slide. This shows us the list of the total capital, improved, capital projects that the agency has budgeted for the next five years. Uh, and there are several projects that are significant. The West Side Water Bank in the current year, in the second line, is $4.75 million. Uh, the big project that you really see is uh, one that is highlighted in orange at the bottom of the chart, which is a SNP Phase two pipeline pump station project for about $50 million spread over four years. Uh, and potentially that can be funded partially through grants, and if not, it will be funded entirely through the district's rates and reserves. Okay. So this, this chart shows us in graphical form what we just saw on the previous slide. Uh, the, the capital projects vary from year to year uh, with a significant peak in 23 because of the starting of the SNP project. Uh, <coughs> And in the last year, as you can see, once the SNP project is done, the total CIP drops from 20, $22.7 million to $14 million. Okay. Uh, an important part of the financial plan is the financial question. policy. I have a question. So sure. um, I know the, the reserves we have, but what about... Um, the combination that we, if we to take possession, we're going to court in January or February. I think it's February. Um, um, we already got possession of the land, but we're going to be paying for that land, whatever the amount is. You don't put that, you don't consider that capital improvements? Uh, no. And uh, this, once again, this Dwayne Chisholm, the um, general manager of AVEC, and uh, Frank, our uh, Director Dino, uh those uh, property acquisitions are part of the High Desert Water Bank, which is uh, funded uh, completely by Metropolitan. is not included in our annual budget, and all the all the expenses and revenues for the High Desert Water Bank are uh, separately accounted for. But when we if we purchase the eleven million dollar uh, Healy Ranch property, um, there's seven hundred acre feet of water that's in there. That would be considered a capital. Uh, uh, wherever the money comes from, it's still a capital improvement, isn't it? That's that's correct. That's correct. And 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 in that property or any other properties uh, or water rights that we may acquire uh, during the course of the year or opportunities that come up, uh, if we can, uh, if we uh, know about them in uh, sufficient time to place them in the budget, they can be placed in the budget. Otherwise they uh, need to come from uh, uh, the reserve funding. But the special allocation. Thank you. So an important part of our revenue program is to ensure uh, adequate that we adequately meet your financial policies. And the district currently has two important elements. One is the debt coverage, and the other one is a reserve policy. On debt coverage, which is basically the ratio of your net revenue, that is re operating revenues minus operating expenses, net revenue to debt service, that is what debt coverage means. Uh, and that coverage, even though the requirement is typically is much lower at 1.25 or so, the district has a policy of, of 1.75, uh, ensuring a good rating on the district's any potential debt, as well as you know, allowing the district sufficient um, cash reserves to meet any contingency that might arise, and that translates to about fifteen million dollars in net revenue every year. This is before counting the capital expenses. So this revenue can then be used to meet some or all of the capital expenses. 
Um, on reserves, we have several reserves. We have an operating reserve, a drought, drought contingency reserve, capital improvement and replacement reserve, the state water contract reserve, and post-employment benefits OPEB reserve. The, we have minimum and maximum targets established for each of these different reserves. On the operating reserve, basically the minimum and maximum is the same, which is about 12 months of annual budgeted operating expenses, and that is about $25.7 million. The drought contingency reserve is 7% of the annual water annual budgeted water sales revenue. That's the minimum, and the maximum is 20% of that revenue, and that equates to between two and close to $6 million. The capital improvement replacement reserve minimum target is $1 million, a one year of CIP uh, cost, and the maximum target is five year of CIP cost, which equates to about between 20 and $108 million. The state water project contract reserve is <coughs> budgeted, the minimum target is as 50% of the annual budgeted state water project cost, and the maximum target is 100% of the state uh, water project cost. The OPEB reserve is basically your 100% of the OPEB liability. It's about $12 million. So the total ta target that we have, minimum and maximum for the, the agency's reserves, are between 74 and $180 million. And then, uh, and then, and that drought, no mind, that drought uh, contingency. You have um, two million dollars, and you have almost five point eight million dollars. And where, where did the five point eight come from? It's twenty percent of the annual budgeted water sales revenue. The two million is seven percent of the annual budgeted water sales revenue. What, Those are just the you, targets. Yeah, why did you use twenty percent? I think that's the the uh, district's policy. Yeah. Oh, come on. Where did, where did you get the 20 percent well it uh this 20 inches again and uh where this came from is uh uh we uh, the agency took a review of other um uh contingency drought contingency policies from other agencies and they uh had a various range and we used uh these ranges between seven and 20 percent as being most uh reasonable uh of uh the um of the other uh, policies that we reviewed, this was uh, adopted by the board. Yeah. Too. And, and it, it probably adopted. I didn't see it, but when did that uh, when did that review happen? Uh, that was about two, about three years, two three years ago. So we got we go from two million to almost uh, six million. Yeah, there, it's a range. So as long as it's between those two numbers, that meets the policy. And two million would meet the policy also. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay, next slide, please. So this slide shows us the revenue adjustments that we've had, excuse me, over the last five years. You can see last year in FY21, we increased our revenues by two and a half percent. And before that, we have been doing seven and a half percent each year for the last, before the previous four years. Next slide, please. So we have two options for the board's consideration. Yeah, well, why did you go back just five years? Why didn't you go back um, yeah, 10 years or 15 years? We, um, we could have. I We, we just used the five year because we went back five and we're going forward five. So. That was the only rationale. I don't think they were then. If you go back ten years, yeah, I they they were they were different. I don't think they. Uh, I don't know when we started with uh, Graf Tellus, but it, uh, but but it appears it's self-serving. Okay. Uh, so, okay. going forward, we have. We have proposed two alternatives or two options. One is to have a 5% revenue adjustment every year. And the other one is to have a 7.5% revenue adjustment every year for the next five years. And the board can decide 
on one of the other option or some combination therefore <clears throat> next slide please so we there there are certain assumptions that we have made with respect to the uh, uh, revenue plan the financial plan and that includes a couple of uh, options there are two groupings of reserves the state water project reserve and all other reserves and they will vary bit depending on some certain assumptions that we have made and then we will show the single combined reserve as well so the very first option that we have is the 5% revenue adjustment and this is a pessimistic outlook that means that we do not get any grant funding from uh, for the snip project uh, and you can see there are three graphs here uh, the the, la the graph on the left hand side the top graph shows us a straight water project reserve that is based on the taxes that the agency receives every year and you can see the bar represent the actual reserves and the two lines represent the minimum and the maximum amount in the reserve targets and we are exceeding our maximum target in the in this particular reserve <clears throat> if we do not get any grant funding on the snip project uh, the second graph that is below the state project graph in the blue bars you basically see that the operating and capital reserve are not enough to meet the uh, minimum target or the maximum target over the five year period so this starts dropping off in in fy 2024 we barely meet the target and then it falls below target in uh, fy 25 and 26 uh, the combined reserve we is there a question at the combined reserve, uh, we can see that we are doing well. Uh, we beat the minimum target, uh, but we are dropping in terms of the reserves every year. Any questions about that? Okay, next slide, please. So this slide shows this, the same chart, except that we do get $27 million in grant funding with the 5% revenue adjustments. And the state water project reserve doesn't get, doesn't change because that's only funded by the state uh, tax, by the property taxes so that, and, the, and the expenses remain the same in that, for that reserve to meet the state water project contract costs. Um, and so that reserve doesn't change. Uh, the operating and capital reserve with the influx of the 27 million. This, this line change? Yeah. Mm. With the influx of just the 27 just, just to clarify, uh, this, uh, just to make sure everybody's aware, this uh, particular 5% rate change assumes that we're receiving the 27 million in grant funding uh, that we're. Uh, which, which is optimistic but not realistic. Okay. It's optimistic but not realistic. Yes, we have not received that grant funding. Uh, and and so we have no real. Why? Can I have a question? Hope wait, wait, to know that we will get that. I got. A, I got a question. As a director, why are we even showing this to speculate? This is not real. This is not. This is not real yeah, time. Me too. This is not real time. This thing shouldn't even be shown. We're speculating. That's like going to Vegas. I mean, I'd love to hope we get it and we can then come back and say the agency let's drop the water rate. But we don't know we're going to get this money, and the chances are, I would I would bet it's it's very slim. We spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on our uh, consultant uh, lobbyist. And we, we, we missed three three times we missed um, getting that uh, step money. And back then, inflation was the total cost was 25, 26 million. Now it's what? 60 million? 70 million? 
I don't think this 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 is my opinion. It's my opinion that this has anything to do for us to make projections and make determinations which rate we're going to go in 2022. That's I agree. I agree. Just from the history of knowing how hard and what the concerted effort has been on trying to get get grant funding to be able to have this as part of our plan or even a consideration is unrealistic. Okay, well, I will, uh, I will Anyways. say one, one thing I wanted to, I wanted to demonstrate uh, to the board and to the public that uh, even with whether, it, regardless of which option is chosen, whether it's a 5% or 7% option, there's still a shortfall in uh, operating reserves. And I wanted to show just what the beneficial impact was of grant funding to that. I'm not trying to uh, sugarcoat one way or the other, but uh, just sh uh, show the results of what that might uh, might result in. So that's that's the only reason to have that uh, uh, this slide. Now we're uh, Dwayne. We're not. Um, I've understood in the previous meeting we were within a reserve, whether it was five percent or seven and a half percent. Has something changed? On a combined level, if you uh, um, go back for water rates, uh, for water rates, you can see that uh, on the five percent rate here on the blue diagram, we're a little we after the third year we begin to uh, not have sufficient reserves and that and those operating reserves to meet the minimum requirements. You mean the board uh, policy? That's correct. Board policy. 125%, correct? Yes, that covers the whole uh, the whole board policy with regards to reserves plus the 1.75%. Uh, and, and it also, if we don't keep that going, we're going to drop from our double, our uh, double, what is it, diamond double A, whatever the hell it is. Um, and that way, our uh, Wells Fargo letter of credit will change. A reduction in rating would would change uh, our uh, our uh, letter of credit. That's correct. Well, the board needs to know that. Dwayne, I've already we're all in the finance committee meetings, and I think that should be brought up. Operating capital reserve falls below the target in the last two years of the plan. Uh, the combined reserve is uh, doing is within the range of, of the max, maximum and minimum, uh, but the operating and capital reserve falls below the minimum line, minimum target. So next slide. Uh, this is the optimistic outlook with the 7.5% annual adjustment every year, where you can see on this particular one with the infusion of the $27 million in grants, we do meet our minimum target reserve level for the water uh, operating and capital reserve, as well as for the combined reserve. And also what these uh, graphs show is in, in the upper uh, uh, upper left-hand corner where they're, what these graphs are showing as far as the state water project reserve would indicate that uh, in, a, in a couple of years, the board may look to reduce um, the tax rate in order to keep those reserves within the uh, within the, the boundaries of those uh, minimums and maximums, and uh, um, and the board made a policy shift to make sure that the taxes were not subsidizing uh, operating costs associated with. Uh, uh, water rates, and uh, this is uh, one of those results where, where uh, uh, the increase in tax revenue uh, may uh, ultimately help to reduce the tax rate uh, on our customers uh, as we move forward. And you can see that that uh, uh, we would need to have an adjustment if this uh, financial plan came in that uh, in that direction. And so that's why we wanted to show you uh, uh, what the 
what the tax uh, uh, portion of this is, and then we're at the water rate portions of what it funds. And then the two, two are separate. Uh, we do combine the two uh, to get a total reserve, uh, but we're trying to make sure that the operating reserves, which is the uh, lower left-hand side with the blue charts are uh, adequate to meet the minimums, uh, stay above that minimum, and, uh, re and to reduce the uh, taxable amounts on the, on the uh, upper left. Okay. So um, this particular slide shows us the revised rates with the two different options that we have. Uh, the treated water rate goes up from six, the current rate is $665 per acre foot would increase to 699 under the 5% or to 7.15 under the 7.5% revenue adjustment. Uh, similarly, all of the other rates increase by those percentages essentially uh, from the current level, they increase by 5% under the option one <coughs> and by 7.5% under option two. <coughs> Can you go back to that slide, please? Um, just a, the average state water rate, this wholesale rate, just to let you know, in Southern California, is, is just under fifteen dollars an acre foot. Fifteen hundred dollars an acre foot. Uh, just under that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> This particular chart again shows us the treated water rates for MNI um, for several years, going back to 2015, and you can see the op under the option one and option two, the last two points. You can see what the rates would look like going from 21 to 22. Uh, I think it's important to understand the impact on single family residences uh, going from the current rate. So typical some single family residents on an average uses 20 units a month. Uh, so if you were to go with a 5% revenue adjustment that would impact them by $1.56 every month. If you went with the 7.5% increase, it would impact them by $2.30 every month. Uh, the difference between the two options is uh, 74 additional cents if you went with the 7.5% revenue adjustment as compared to the 5% revenue adjustment. What, why are you showing this graph? Are you trying to push it one way or another? No, I thought we, somebody had asked, uh, you know, what are the impacts on uh, single family customers in the last at the at the finance committee meeting. And so we've put this slide together. I, in fact, I think I even mentioned it last time at the at the finance committee meeting, you know, what the impact would be for 20 units. I think I'd mentioned something. I think like we're trying to look at what's the appropriate rate for this coming year. That's it. That's Matt, you want to go over uh, the results of the customer meeting? Yeah, thank you, Dwayne. Uh, good evening, directors. It's Matt. Uh, so what you see on the, on the slide there is a summary of the customer meeting that staff and our consultant had uh, last week with a, a good attendance by our retail customers and some individual customers as, as well as Edwards Air Force Base and U.S. Borax. So on the left, you can see we had a hybrid of, of a meeting. We had a few folks that attended in person and then quite a few that called in as we went through the presentation. Uh, we basically gave the same presentation that the board just saw, um, presented the two options of 5% and 7.5 that would be uh, presented this evening to, to the board under the public hearing. And down at the bottom, you can see a few uh, individuals representing uh, mutual water companies, U.S. Borax, and local water agency. Each had comments either at the meeting or immediately following the 
customer meeting. So you can see the quotes there. I'll give you a second to to read those. No, no need me repeating that. Uh, th this was also included in the uh, staff report. And then also on a snapshot that you can see there where we had individuals that attended the meeting in person, they signed in who they're representing and what their preferred rate increase was. Um, so that's a summary of the customer meeting that we had last week. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Well, it's very simple. If you had to put 2% down, they would have said 2%. They don't run the agency. We were, we're, you know what? This run very small increments of, of our district. We run 2,400 square miles, this agency does. And they don't know anything about bonds. None of them have bonds. And they don't understand about bond ratings. And if you I, I, if you had to put down there, uh, would you prefer a 2% increase or a 7.5% increase or 5%? But better yet, if you would have said if you want a 2% versus a 5% increase, they all would have put 2%. I mean, I, I would have done the same thing. But they don't understand the, the, me, the, the mechanism of how this agency is run. When we put the solar power in, you know, and we had to borrow money for red bonds for that. We had to put revenue bonds for the uh, West West uh, District, and on and on and on. You know, we got to pay that back, and we got to keep our ratings and our reserves high. They don't have to, they don't have a 125 percent uh, reserves in their uh, board of directors. I bet you they don't. You know, so I mean, you know, this this doesn't tell me anything. You know, I, I would disagree with that. These are our customers. We have to have the most utmost respect in, you know, 5% is not peanuts. You know, 5% is a considerable amount. And we had a meeting and all of them came up, um, with, I think, 5%. And we were told a few meetings ago, oh, most of the customers agreed to the 7.5% was my understanding. And that's not the case. And we had meeting to explain the whole presentation, just like um, the board received today, and it was the 5%. And people, you know, do understand we meet our reserve of $26 million, we were told, you know, before. And we can certainly tighten our belts a little, you know, bit. And we need to do our part. And, you know, 5% gets us by just fine. It's not as much as 7.5%, but that's okay. And we're talking about, um, you know, doing our some additional lines, you know, I really doubt if it's appropriate whether the existing taxpayers, if we put, you know, money in for the existing, for a new line to be built, I don't think that's correct. That should come from the new users, not the existing, you know, water provider, not our well, existing George, that's your, Yeah, George, that's your opinion. And my opinion is that a third of our, 25% of our district, once we get to 700 acre feet of water, they can't take it because they don't have the infrastructure to pump it out of the ground. So whose fault is that? Is that AVAC? Is AVAC becoming, the, um, is AVAC going to become the um, um, Section 8 of water agencies for the Antelope Valley? Is that what we're going to do it because somebody comes in, they want to dis uh, have a discount on um, the water? We're, we have the, we have our water rates 50% less than anybody in Southern California. And we're not just raising the rate because we feel like it. We've got to maintain it. I'm going to tell you right now, I will bet anything that within the next 90 days, when the new figures come out, because I asked Sadair, uh, he said that these are not incorporated, our power costs, um, I went this over with um, Dwayne the other day, and he says, yeah, power costs, when they come out with the new figures, are going to be substantially high. So it is going to cut into our reserves. I would not like to go back to these customers and say, hey, guess what? You guys want a 5%? This is our problem. We, okay. we don't have a problem at this day. Well, I'm saying right now, George, we got a problem because, zero, zero, George, 20 percent of the water, the, the, the 20,000 acre feet of water we get, we cannot buy that and bank it. That water has to be used for emergency use only. I checked with the state myself because I heard a different story in our agency. We cannot take that water. We cannot exchange that water. We cannot put that water in our recharge basin. It's what we use, we can get and buy it. And that's as far as it goes. Yeah, well, we don't need to recharge it if we're going to have a use for it. Thank oh, you yeah. very much. 
Thank our, you our, our reserves are our reserves are less than sixty thousand acre feet. Well, if it's even available. What? I didn't make the story up. This came out on South Friday, and nobody has corrected the numbers yet. I guarantee when Sadir and everybody else gets a hold of these numbers, I guarantee we're going to see a different uh, situation in the next 60 days. Yeah, we have uh, two, two additional graphs uh, that uh, we wanted to show you um, in response to requests. And uh, this one's the... Oh. I have a question. Are we talking 75 cents? You're breaking up, Shelly. Having a hard time understanding you. Uh, I didn't say anything. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Um, hopefully, we can get a better connection. Uh, well, with the uh, director sociable. Um, in the meantime, I wanted to uh, uh, indicate that uh, this is the uh, news release and the compu uh, computer uh, consumer price index that uh, came out that uh, Director Janow was referring to. And you can see that the numbers have jumped up uh, to uh, a 6% and uh, uh, in the last month for, for an annual uh, inflation rate. And uh, in re reviewing the ar article further, we can anticipate that uh, um, uh, that six percent is uh, um, a um, inflation factor that uh, we anticipate for uh, 2022 uh, moving forward. Um, the next uh, slide, please. Uh, also, I wanted to uh, provide a uh, graph. Uh, this was also requested that uh, uh, we provide a variable rate graph. And you can see here that this graph is uh, showing a trend of the variable rates, which corresponds to the electricity and, and the chemical costs, and those types of things for moving water to the agency. And you can see that uh, there's a, a gentle trend moving up uh, from, uh, from that uh, particular graph, too. So that concludes our presentation and uh, be happy to answer any other questions that you may have and open the... At this point in the hearing, I'd like to ask if uh, there are any comments from our public. Yeah, Keith, this is John Yukastad. Yes, please. Yes, yeah. please. Uh, first of all, uh, in the last 10 years, uh, how many times have you had a 7% or 7.5% increase in the last 10 years? Probably at least four or five. What do you think, Wayne? Yeah, I, th uh, that's, I think that's pretty close. Yeah. Four, probably four. Uh, then I, my memory must really be getting fuzzy because I... There's only two times that I can recall in 10 years that you've had less than a 7%. Okay, one you had, it, one you went ahead and dropped it down to, I think, 4%, and then you turned around the following year and hit it back up at 10%. Now, this is before you were there, Dwayne. Right. Last year, Mr. Uh, Paris went ahead and looked out for the best interest of the residents and the water users in the valley, and uh, he had to fight to get his uh, uh, decrease instead of 7%. I heard the same argument from Shelley and from from uh, Frank Donato, okay? Secondly, okay, I'd like to ask Frank, where do you get your water for that, uh, for your place up in uh, Luna Valley, Frank? What? Where do you get your water for your place up in Leona Valley? Where are you? Where do you purchase your water? Is that well water, Frank, or is that AVAC water, or you get it through? Which one? I got. Question? Yeah, I got. I, which one? You talking about the winery? The I'm winery. Not, I get, yeah, hey, the a, that's AVAC right. water. That's AVAC water. Let me that's AVAC water. You get all AVAC water. 
No, not all of it. But that's that's that, that question. Answer. That question's irrelevant to what we're doing right now. Oh, like you're on a committee and you're pushing and you push every time for all these years. You push for these rate increases all the time. We don't have a George, choice, John. George John, George John, John, John. We don't. Our, we don't have a ten. Uh, we don't have a five dollar minimum wage. We don't have. We. I mean, it, everything's changed. Minimum wage. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me, gentlemen. Gentlemen, let's come. I'm not arguing our, with him. Can you go yeah. take take control, John Keep? Because that I'll, I'll take control. I my personal take control. my personal life has nothing to do with the water rate. You're but right. I, You're right. There that that isn't being impacted at all by the rate increases. Now you get your water from for your winery. You get it from Cal Water. Cal Water didn't have a turnout until up to five years ago, so they weren't using over in there. Well, you know, John. John, I'll, right. I'll tell you something, John. I own over. John, all the time John, John, is it my time? John, you know what you're talking about. I own what 10 you, properties. I John, John, I own 10 properties in L.A. District 40's district. 10, okay? Where does their water come from, John? Is that, is that okay, funny? gentlemen, gentlemen, that's enough. That's enough. Let's yeah. move along. Are there any other members of the public that would like to make a comment? Uh, yes, I, this is Greg Wood from Rosemary Community Service District. I'd like to make a comment, please. Yes, please. Proceed. Yes, um... You know, I, I've been listening to the presentation, and it's a it's a good budget presentation. And I, as I've stated before, I appreciate the fact that you know you you're looking at a seven and a half percent, and I understand about dipping into the revenue uh, reserves and and things of that nature. And it is tough, but you know, I would like to remind the AVEC board that, you know, from our agency perspective, that, you know, because of the pandemic, because of the moratoriums, uh, because of the Senate bills that have been passed, um, you know, it's made it harder for us to uh, keep our revenues up. Uh, we've all lost revenue uh, because people, have, you know, lost their jobs, uh, just couldn't pay their water bills, things of that nature. So we've had to tighten our belts in areas to uh, make up for lost revenue. And we, we all know that once this pandemic is behind us, uh, things are going to get back to normal and a little more sane out there. But I'm asking that, you know, I understand your budget. I understand how you don't want to start dipping into your reserves. But if there's a way that you can maybe – lower that 7.5% down to a more reasonable number, because uh, I'm sure I, I speak for most of the other agencies out there. If, if we've lost revenue, they've all lost revenue. And if, you know, as we come out of this pandemic and we start getting our revenue streams healthy again, uh, then we can weather uh, the rate increase much better. Uh, it, it's it's a hardship for all of us, and I'm just asking AVEC to take that into consideration uh, before you uh, go with the full 7.5% increase. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wood. Are there any other public comments? You know, uh, Keith, yeah, this, this is George. We had a we had a public you know hearing to listen to what our ratepayers or what our customers, what they perceived, what they would like. And then we come back and say, well, gee, you know, we shouldn't listen to them. We should do a 7.5% because they're not aware of everything. They are aware. They had the same presentation, same presentation um, at the hearing as we had we had today. And these reserves are somewhat you know, self-set um, by, by the AVAC board. We have more than enough reserves. And these new fees didn't start. We started our consultant or we fellas. And I think they've done us more harm than good. And I really don't even think we should use them any, any longer. But we got by for years and years and years without the consultant. And since we had the consultant, they have a set of standards they'd like to see us you know, use, but it's been in the det detriment to our customers. And Thank you for the 5% is more than enough to meet what our reserves in our operating, you know, air budget. Uh, Joanne, Joanne, this is Director Van Dam. I got a comment. Uh, 
last year when Justin and myself, Justin Lane and myself uh, were on the board, we didn't raise rates at all, AVAC rates, did we? Yes, there was a 2.5% rate increase. Okay, so just to uh, all the mutuals out there, we, we do try to look out for you guys. You know, our interest is always to provide the cheapest water we can, reliable water. And so, you know, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, we only went up 2%. And that's not much. So we're, we are, you know, trying to look out for you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. That is a very good point. Okay, are there any more comments from the public? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. If there are no more comments from the public, are there any other directors that would like to make a comment? Well, Mr. President, this is uh, Director Miller. I thank you. Please. Okay, thank you. Um, I just in reviewing, um, remembering from last year, we decided that because of the pandemic, we would be gracious enough to not raise the rates as high as uh, the seven and a half, and we gave the two and a half, as Gary said, and. <clears throat> Looking at the graph at the at the five percent rate there to keep the rates under seven and a half percent. In future years, we're going to have to account. We um, maybe have to raise the rates, but we'll see what that brings. But I would I would be in favor of something between the two and a half and five percent. Because we're still coming out of this pandemic, um, I do realize we have inflation costs, and we need to take care of our people. So for one year, for 2022, I think we need to have a little grace once again. So that's my, my participation. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. President, for item 7B2, I would uh, so move that we approve a water rate adjustment of 5% the county. Uh, pardon, pardon me, George. Pardon me, George. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to do that, but at first I must uh, close the public hearing. And I will do that now. Uh, please proceed, George. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll repeat it. For 7B2, I'll move that uh, we adjust the water rate for the year, calendar year 2022 to 5% per year. Thank you. <clears throat> Do we have a second for George's motion? Director Van Dam seconds that motion. Thank you. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Shelley Sorcival? Yes. Frank Donato? No. Keith Dias? Yes. The measure passes. Thank you. Hey, hey. Oh. Item number 7C1. Public Information Committee. Director Lane, do you have a report? Yeah, Mr. President, uh, I do. If the directors would uh, refer to page uh, 73, 74, please. It, uh, on that committee, there's, um, uh, of course, you know, Keith Dias and, and Gary Van, Van Dam. And there's, um, I don't know if this is a apropos now as it was last week, but there was a, a billboard on the, the freeway that um, most of the water agencies in the Antelope Valley were participating and just advertising about uh, the drought. I think we can see it on on the on the our display right here. And and we spoke about it in somewhat in, in length right there. And they the committee they pretty much agreed, but with some you no know, changes. Uh, rather than uh, was thought about contributing um, the dollars for three months, we thought about if we could do it every other month. 
and change the the message that might be more effective. And uh, Tom Barnes is you know, kind of screwheading this with the other agencies and so they'll have a little, little bit more information. But uh, after the, the rain, I'm not sure how appropriate this is, but you know, you know, Tom, would you take it from here? Directors, again, this is Tom Barnes. Uh, I'd like to report on consideration of uh, drought conservation messaging uh, for the Antelope Valley. As George had mentioned, um, there was a group that had gotten together um, uh, to uh, consider sharing thoughts and ideas for coordinated uh, valley-wide drought conservation messaging. Uh, we met first in August and we met again uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, there is a follow-up meeting this Thursday to uh, give an update. Uh, and the main water uh, providers that were participating was were AVEC Water Agency, Little Rock Creek Irrigation District, uh, Los Angeles County Water Works, Palmdo Water District, Quartz of Water District, and Roseman Community Services District. So the topic uh, of conversation for uh, the subcommittee on messaging was just that group messaging ideas. And uh, we also talked about re rebate programs and uh, individual messaging and pu public workshops. Thank you. Uh, with the group messaging ideas, uh, what came to the forefront in the conversation was the idea of um, having a drought con conservation message through a digital billboard advertisement. Uh, what was proposed was a digital ad that would run for uh, three months. Uh, the ad was to alternate between two locations in Palmdale. Uh, there was uh, two locations that were submitted uh, for ideas, uh, but the, the most profitable one that uh, the group felt was off the 14 freeway near the uh, Antelope Valley Mall. And it would, uh, the messaging would be both southbound and northbound, so you could take advantage of both um, lines of traffic. As we had showed earlier, this is the actual um, drought billboard. And this was uh, reviewed by the group. Uh, at the time that it was sent over, uh, there were two options. The group chose this option of billboard. Uh, the AVEC staff did review it and um, did. Uh, give some input as to uh, what we believe could change in the drought messaging, uh, including, uh, you know, saying that the drought is not just in the Antelope Valley, but it is you know, statewide. And here's a picture, a map of the billboard itself near the Antelope Valley Mall. And again, this was a, this is a billboard that would uh, share time with eight other slots and it would be up for about six seconds uh, every rotation. As far as the current uh, cost breakdown, this was presented uh, to the Public Information Committee. Uh, Little Rock Creek uh, is offering uh, $1,500, uh, which is $375 per month for, for the three months. Palmdale Water District, $3,000. Uh, Quartz of Water District, $1,500. Uh, Antelope Valley Water Agency uh, was asked to uh, to give three thousand dollars as well, along with LA County Water Works, and both uh, AVEC and LA County Water Works are pending their approval. So Roseman CSD also offered uh, fifteen hundred dollars for the advertising. So the total cost was thirteen thousand five hundred dollars, and that's forty five hundred dollars per month for three months. I just got a message today actually from uh, the representative at Palmdale Water District. Uh, they're kind, they have been communicating with Lamar Advertising. Uh, the contract itself actually uh, is for two months with the possibility of a third month. So that's currently where we're at with that contract. AVEC reviewed the digital billboard advertising. Yeah. Uh, AVEC did review the digital adver billboard advertising. Uh, Public Information Committee will review it on December 7th. And here are some of the comments uh, in the presentation that were made during the uh, committee meeting. 
the comments made by the uh, committee members were that AVEC should participate, but with an additional design input. I believe Director Lane mentioned that, that there would uh, be the desire to have more input on design. The timing of that as well could be improved as we move into 2022. Uh, the water supply situation now, of course, is bleak, but uh, within the next two to three months, all the way actually until the month of May, we will know uh, where we are, where we stand in allocation from the state in 2022. So if we could change the timing so that we could stretch it out, uh, having uh, alternative billboard designs and extend that out so that we can get into springtime when we know a little bit better about the water situation for next year. Also too is discussed that if we did support the billboard, AVEC logo should be included with the other logos. And also that the support should be limited to the current $3,000 request. Just, just one uh, correction uh, there. I, I'm assuming it was the three thousand dollars request for three months. Uh, three, th yeah, total three thousand dollars total. That would be a thousand dollars a month, correct? Uh, Not seven fifty is shown in the staff report. Oh, okay. I apologize. Yeah, thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, I apologize for that. Okay. Yeah, so thousand dollars. Yeah. So, uh, so the recommendation now uh, from the committee was that AVEC participate with the $3,000 support, but with additional billboard design input and timing recommendations based on the um, 2022 water supply situation. One other, this one is again, uh, one other advantage to having this type of advertisement is uh, as part of um, any of the uh, grant funding that we're pursuing, uh, having a active uh, conservation program helps in that application process. So uh, we can utilize that uh, in that uh, uh, grant process. Uh, this is Director Miller, I have a question. Please. Um, when you're talking about the additional design input, who does that? And are we spending any extra money on that? Thank you. I believe at this point, uh, we have the ability to give design input. In fact, as early as this week on Thursday, um, there would be no additional cost. Uh, the actual designs can be submitted uh, by the group. They would have to be reviewed by the group uh, and approved by the group if the full funding were to be supported. Uh, and so we could do that and we can do, we can actually submit uh, design changes and within 24 hours, they can be changed. So you can put in multiple design. You know. Yeah, I may, I may uh, add, you know, add uh, the committee along with staff, we thought it'd be more effective rather than having the same message for two to three months is to maybe try to alternate, have a month then then not having anything and alternate it. And instead of three months straight, you know, uh, six months, alternate month to month, and try to uh, change the message uh, each month. But again, about about the drought, I don't know how much effect that's going to have. People drive them by today. But anyway, the committee was not real strong one way or another. But but again, as as Dwayne mentioned, we didn't hear that in the original committee meeting. Um, now that may help us for some of our, some of our grants. And so the committee does you know, recommend that, and and we try to maybe leave it up to to um, staff to try to work out if that could be done every other month and try to change the message. I like that, George, that's a good idea. Well, and I, th I think you could have a great opportunity for students to get involved and have a contest or something, <laughs> something to think about. Good, good idea. Are there any more questions or discussion? If not, could we have a motion on the, on the item? This is Director Donato. On, uh, I'll move on 7C1 that we allocate $3,000 a month for the um, drought um, water conservation message. It'll be $3,000 total. 3000 total, Frank? I thought they said 3000 a month. 
No, it's three thousand total. Thousand. Oh, three thousand then. Okay, that's fine. Oh, Mr. Director Miller, I'll second. Thank you, I'd the motion, Mr. President. Any more discussion? Was that George or was that Audrey? Audrey, I think. It was Audrey. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Shelley Sursible? Yes. Keith Dines? Yes, the measure passes. Thank you very much. Any Anything further, Director Lane? No, no, no that uh, concludes the report. Thank you. Thank you. Item 8, General Manager's Report. Mr. Chisholm? Thank you very much, uh, um, uh, Board President Dias. Um, this is the General Manager's Report for December 14th, 2021. And uh, uh, unlike uh, the previous uh, six months of reports, we have some good news. Uh, you can see that the, uh, uh, we've got a little animation here showing the, uh, um, uh, the rain that we're anticipate, uh, anticipating uh, getting for the next several days. Um, we had that winter storm watch um, and we had some snow down to 2,000, 3,000 feet tonight and they're expecting two to three feet in the northern area and you can see that blue as it comes, comes through there. So, give me an idea. Also, uh, can we uh, make this a little bit bigger, please? Thank you. Uh, you can see here, this is also the 10, uh, uh, 10 day forecast. And you can see this uh, part of the 10 day forecast is uh, actuals that have occurred since uh, December 4th through the 13th. And you can see we had close to three inches. Uh, December 14th was 3.1 inches, which was the big one that you saw today. And this is in the Northern area. And then you see some uh, more rain coming in uh, Thursday and Friday, and then uh, a little bit on uh, 23rd and 24th. So you can see there's almost six, six and a half uh, inches of rain anticipated over this 10-day uh, period in, uh, in December. So uh, very, good, uh, very good rain totals in our uh, watershed. So uh, uh, this, is the, uh, this is what average is, these dark blue bars. And this is actual, so you can see that one big storm that we had in October provided uh, quite a bit of uh, rainfall uh, during October. Uh, we fell short again uh, in November, um, but we're already up to uh, 5.1 inches here. And then we're looking at two or three inches more uh, before the end. So we are probably not going to get to the full 10 inches, which would be what we consider the average but we're certainly uh, doing better than we, we have in the past, especially with this extra amounts that you see in here. So uh, uh, on a total water uh, amount, that's, uh, that's, that's good. Uh, this is better news than we've had in a long time, um, but uh, I do want to, I don't mean to be pessimistic, but uh, uh, we've seen this pattern before where we have a couple of good months and then it'll dry off. Uh, and not get much rain in the, in January and February, um, and time will tell as to whether we're in a um, uh, going to be in a wet year or an average year or uh, uh, how it turns out. But this is certainly good news compared to uh, where we were at the same time last year. Uh, if we're looking at our uh, reservoir conditions here, you can see our current level in Lake Orville's uh, 30%. Uh, this red line here is what's uh, average, so we're still considerably below average. Uh, here is at 24% in San Luis and 42%. Now, obviously, the storms that we've seen over the net, or over uh, the last few days have yet to fully uh, uh, materialize in the uh, reservoirs. Here, we'll get runoff for probably a week or two or three um, associated with uh, the storms and, and the snow that's associated with that. Um, one word of caution, most of the areas uh, within the Orville shed have recently be, have been burned with some of the major fires the last two years. And what we experienced last year was that a uh, considerable amount of the runoff actually never 
never got to uh, Lake Orville, uh, was soaked up by the soil uh, because it was so uh, dry and uh, exposed to uh, the elements unlike a forested uh, type of terrain. Um, here, we, here we go again, we find the same thing. We, we're starting to see this uptick and, and uh, remember this blue line here is average. So we're still considerably below average in storage in, uh, in Lake Orville. Uh, same thing goes here for uh, 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 San Luis Reservoir. Uh, closer to home here, we're in our, uh, certainly in our low peak periods. Uh, quartz hills are running at uh, 6 million gallons a day. Uh, 3 million gallons of Roseman and act into our exchange 0.7. So you're looking between uh, 9 to 10 million gallons a day is uh, what we're uh, uh, moving through our, our conventional treatment plants, uh, bare minimum flows. Uh, if we look at our geo purification uh, uh, operations, this is primarily for um, uh, um, for the water uh, uh, water treatment, uh, you can see we got to the east side, we got some uh, 4 million gallons a day going to the uh, west side, and uh, we also got uh, Bench Ranch. So we got some water um, between uh, 6.8 to 6.6 .6 million gallons a day going uh, out of uh, our uh, geopurification uh, processes. Uh, as far as our water bank and the only water we're putting in, which we're immediately taking out, is the east side water bank. Uh, everything else is off. Uh, from a water quality point of view, this is our THM results. And uh, uh, we've been uh, consistently meeting and you can see the last uh, few quarters we've been uh, trending downward. And uh, this, this trend goes from 2017 to the present time. So this uh, line uh, corresponds our, our, our goal, uh, our local uh, goal for AVEC. And then this uh, line here corresponds to the MCL, the maximum contaminant level. So we're trying, we're consistently meeting our water quality goals for THMs. Uh, looking at our operation maintenance uh, updates uh, that we have for you, we're currently uh, only running about 30% of our capacity from the West Side Water Bank. Uh, we do have all the uh, materials ready to make that repair on the uh, uh, on the north uh, feeder, um, and that's scheduled for January 17th. Uh, we have our main, uh, winter treatment plant uh, operations. We have scheduled uh, several shutdowns in January uh, to facilitate some of those maintenance work. Um, and then uh, uh, we're uh, in working with our uh, uh, LA County Water Works uh, partners. Uh, we're increasing our flow from 5 million gallons a day to 12 million gallons a day for the next two weeks. Uh, that will um, uh, allow us to uh, not put m uh, much of any of our Table A water through the uh, 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 through the uh, uh, um, through the Quartz Hill plant, and it really helps us out. Uh, we have no new COVID-19 cases. Uh, as far as events and schedules, we have a public workshop um, uh, with the redistricting uh, committee uh, tomorrow. Uh, that's the uh, uh, 12th. Uh, and we're proposing to uh, cancel the, uh, 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 the next uh, board meeting, which is the 28th of December, and uh, just move on to uh, 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 the first meeting in January would be 111 of 22. Uh, because it falls right in between uh, Christmas and New Year's. And we that meets with the board approval. And as far as my schedule goes, except for a few days off around Christmas time, I should be around uh, most of the next two weeks. We have no uh, scheduled uh, meetings with any outside uh, public entities um, scheduled in the next two week period. Any questions? Happy to answer them for you. Looks like we have none, Dwayne. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item nine, director's report. Do any of our board members have reports for the uh, the meeting tonight? 
Hearing none, item 10, attorney's report. Tilden? Hello, Tilden, are you on the line? If not, we'll move along to item 11, request for future agenda items. Hello. Any request? Hello, President Dyer. Oh, I'm sorry, Tilden, go ahead. It's the, the minutes from our last board meeting, is that correct? That is correct. So do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of the Antelope Valley East Kern Water Agency Financing Authority from September 8, 2020? Motion, please. Mr. President, this is Rob. I move we approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of the East Kern Water Agency Financing Authority of September 8, 2020. Thanks, Rob. Second. This is Director Miller. I'll second. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Frank Donato? Shelly Sourceable? Yes. Keith Dyes? Yes, the measure passes. And since that is the only action item, for the financing authority meeting. I will now reconvene the board of directors meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. I believe I was supposed to have asked for a roll call vote for the financing authority meeting. Holly, can you do that now, please? Certainly. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Frank Donato? Shelley Sourceable? Yes. Keith Dyes? Yes. Okay, now I will reconvene the Board of Directors meeting for the Antelope Valley Eastern Water Agency. And, and President Dyes, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Till okay, yes. So uh, when, we're, when we reconvene the uh, board of directors meeting, the uh, general meeting, we also need to have another roll call. Okay, we will do that. Holly, can you please call roll again? Certainly. 7 p.m. Gary Van Dam. Yes. Audrey Miller. Here. Robert Paris. Yes. George Lane. Yes. Frank Donato. Shelly Sourceable? Yes. Keith Dyes? Yes, the measure passes. So we are now back in the regular board meeting, and the item before us is item 13, closed session. Duane, do we have a reason to go into closed session tonight? Yes, we do. We have items A, B, and C. Okay, do I have a motion that we go into closed session for items 13A, 13B, and 13C? This is Director Miller. I'll move that we go into closed session for those items. Thank you. Mr. President, this is Rob. I second that motion. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Frank Donato? Shelly Sourceable? Yes. Keith Dyes? Yes, the measure passes. Okay, we will be going into closed session as soon as Holly can make that transition. Thank you. Thank you.
what do you think? Good advice, right? Yeah.